Progress is lost in Davillion, Riot Games gets fully bought out. All that and more, I'm Zach Sharps, and this is Free to Play Weekly. First up in the news this week, Nexon's free-to-play team-based shooter Ghost in the Shell First Assault is officially available on Steam Early Access. For a whopping 5 US dollars, you can check out this Early Access title and by doing so, get to experience 3 team-based modes and 5 maps inspired by the standalone complex series. Nexon of course plans on adding in new content throughout Early Access and are taking player feedback for gameplay adjustments. Typically, I'm not really fond of early access, as you guys may know. However, for those of you really hyped for the game, $5 really isn't that bad. Were you one of those that checked out a galaxy far, far away a long time ago? Well, if you subscribed to Star Wars The Old Republic in the past and didn't feel like subscribing for Knights of the Fallen Empire, you can now get the first chapter for free. That's not all you will get though. You remember those level 60 boosts that they added to the game? Yeah, you get one of those for free too. Considering the first chapter is an extreme hook, I can see why Bioware is doing this. It may entice players to subscribe for the rest of the chapters, especially since chapter 1 was pretty good. Regardless, it's kind of hilarious that they're trying to entice you to subscribe when recently EA said they don't wish to nickel and dime players. Gotta love hypocrisy. Speaking of polar opposites, it's now time we discuss Try On Worlds and to start, their free to play game Trove. Those of you who are still playing the blocky creation game will be happy to hear that there's a brand new class to play around with. Inspired by Rift's Chloromancer, Trift's new class features a special magic attack that heals allies and damages enemies at the same time while also boasting four other plant-centric abilities. To acquire the Chloromancer for free, you'll need to complete a special quest within Rift called Blocks. Pretty neat addition to Trove, especially since I enjoyed playing a Chloromancer in Rift. That said, we all know Tryon Worlds. If there was a Vegas betting line on if they will successfully launch a game with no issues, all of our bank accounts would be safe betting on a failed launch. Davillion was no different. What appeared to be a solid launch for the MMO action RPG ended up being false hope, but what do I mean? Well, players on Davillion's Sea Drift server logged in recently to find that a server update had wiped their character's progress. After the server restart on December 12th, players on the server logged in to discover that they'd lost experience, items, and credit for completed quests. In return for this major screw-up, Tryon has given compensation packages to players and encouraged them to contact support for further help. However, some of those who received compensation packages stated that the compensation wasn't enough. And yeah, it's a mess. It's time for the question of the week. Last week on the show, we didn't really have a question of the week because it was episode 200 and I decided thanking you guys for being awesome was a higher priority. So if you want your comment possibly featured next show, make sure to leave a comment down below. This week's question is, how many chances do you give a game developer or publisher before you no longer trust them and why? Typically, I give developers a second chance and that's it. However, there's always exceptions to the rule. It's just very rare that there is an exception. Interested to see how understanding you guys tend to be with all these game companies. Speaking of game companies, for our last new story of the week, we learn that Chinese game company Tencent has finally purchased what little of Riot Games they already didn't own. Tencent has owned a large portion of Riot for a while now, but now they own everything. Which means they own 100% of Riot's free-to-play MOBA League of Legends. This on the surface is to provide Riot game employees more compensation for their work on the game. However, being that League of Legends is a very popular title, the most popular MOBA on the market, it makes you wonder if Riot feels that it just reached its peak. Why do I say this? Well, usually when a company sells its equity, they either feel that that equity has reached the peak value, or on the more boring side, it might just mean exactly what they stated regarding employee compensation. Believe what you wish, but those of you still playing League of Legends shouldn't notice any significant changes to the normal, especially considering Tencent has owned a good bit of Riot since 2011. 
Speaking of giving away things, we happen to have some free giveaways going on on MMOBomb.com, so head on over there, check them out, and we promise that Tencent won't buy you out as well. Also be sure to follow all the social medias and signing out until after the holidays. My name is Zach Sherps and I'll catch you guys next time.